Well, hello everyone. This is Jeff Clark with a very special unboxing, or special for me, I should say. Uh, just kind of a fun memory from my early childhood and early flying days. So let's see what we got here in this box. And there we have it. This is a Gemini Jets, uh, Gemini 200. This is a pre-order I got from uh, Collectible Jets. It came in about a month ago and I ordered it about uh, four or five months ago. And this is a model to uh, remind us of the heritage of British Airways. It's their 100th anniversary this year. So they did a few heritage models to uh, represent that where they painted them in uh, heritage colors. And this is one of four of the heritage models they have. Um, or the uh, British Airways has and they have uh, three 747 400s which is what this one is and uh, also uh, a, a 320 I believe it is maybe it's a 319 it's in the BEA livery but uh, I have all of the uh, li heritage livery models coming except for the the Airbus so I have uh, ordered them from in flight as well so they have uh, all the heritage versions the boac the nagus and the landor liveries so those are going to be coming at some point i think that it just shipped one of them to me so i uh, should be having one of those in flights coming soon so i'm not sure which one it is yet but we'll have to check it out so pretty standard gemini box I flew on uh, British Airways a uh, lot as a kid and on uh, BOAC as well. So I have uh, the 747-100s that I flew on for the most part. Um, I do have a BOAC logbook that I was able to get signed a number of times by the pilot. And uh, that gives me a nice uh, go back to those times. So I was real excited to see them do a BOAC livery. Uh, in the 747-400 that they have, which is, uh, their, you know, this is an active aircraft, so it's kind of nice to see. Uh, we've got a basic uh, Gemini stand here. I, I, I hope that some point they're going to start producing a stand that has a bit more interest to it, because we've got such a interesting model here, but really no information about it on the plaque. So that's uh, kind of one thing that JC Wings is definitely doing better. Uh, this is also a flaps down version, and uh, I'll be getting the gear out for that here pretty soon so you can uh, see the gear in place. Uh, some of the models are actually producing the gear with two nose gear, and in this case uh, there is two sets of nose gear so that you can have it in a in-flight configuration, as in the strut is not, uh, uh, is not compressed, or an on-the-ground configuration where the strut is compressed. So. I think that's a pretty cool feature. I have one other uh, flaps down 747 and it doesn't doesn't come with two sets of gear but it might be possible. It's a Gemini as well so maybe I can uh, get that. So Here's the uh, covers which you can use if you do want to do an in-flight configuration but as I mentioned this is a flaps down so it's kind of more a version where the gear would be displayed. There's some protective plastic here on the model to keep it protected while it's in the box. All the flaps look to be in good uh, condition there. Sometimes the pieces come off, they're just plastic, so... Very iconic and striking livery. I really do like the simplicity of the BOAC liver. It's just very uh, nice to look at and just a good looking aircraft. Uh, on the real aircraft, uh, originally, this is a heritage retro livery. So in the actual days when this livery was in use, this bottom surface was actually just polished. The polished surface of the aircraft, not painted. 
uh, but when they did the heritage livery uh, they did paint the bottom obviously it's a lot easier to do that than it is to try to polish it down 747 of course just such a striking iconic aircraft so good to look at this is GBYGC and this is a 747-400 this is the BOAC Speedbird Speedbird was actually uh, a design done earlier for Imperial Airways which was one of the precursors to British Airways so cool and the actual heritage uh, original aircraft would have had a Royal Mail insignia on there because uh, BOAC and British Airways were uh, carriers for Royal the Royal Mail so they had their insignia on the aircraft as well and it would have been on both sides but it wasn't displayed on the uh, heritage livery and I got to fly on a number of the 747-100s which are the uh, slightly shorter version of the 747 which was lengthened when they extended the upper deck here. They actually added another 25 feet of length for between the 200 and the 400 variant. So this livery was used from 1964 to 1974 and uh, on the original aircraft. And then this was painted, uh, taken to uh, Dublin, I believe is where they painted this. And uh, it was sent there on February the 8th and then returned to Heathrow on February the February the 18th uh, on flying a air, flight number BA100 and the speed burrs designed to represent a bird in flight and it's been retained as the call sign for BOAC and British Airways ever since So let's have a look here. Front part of the aircraft, we got the nose cone there, which is nicely marked out. It's flag carrier of the United Kingdom. So we have their flag there. And you can see the pilot's escape hatch. And British Airways does put a partial registration just above the cockpit windows on all their aircraft. See the spray nozzles there really well. And we have down here our angle of attack sensors and pitot tubes and such. And the L1 door. So a little bit of packaging remnant there. Could use a little shine up. We might do that when we're done. The 747-400 has a exit door on the upper deck on both sides. It's also can be used as a entry door. And British Airways also employs these markings on the side of the aircraft to show uh, emergency crews where they would uh, enter the aircraft uh, to most safely. L2 door, we can nicely see the drip rails above the doors there. BOAC, just to remind your boarding passengers what aircraft their airline they're flying on. L3 door. L4 door and the final L5 door. Five escape doors on the 747 on each side. And not including the first class or upper deck cabins rooms there. 
is our BA100 and hearkening back to 1919 which was the formation of the Aircraft Transport and Travel Company which was one of the precursors to British Airways it's kind of a complex hin history with British Airways uh, because there have been a number of different iterations of the company so that was in 1919 and uh, uh, within a year, or 1919, excuse me, within a year, uh, that company had actually gone bankrupt, bankrupt and was uh, gobbled up by another small airline. And then that small airline and three other airlines merged to form Imperial Airways in 1924. So on the starboard side, we've got our cargo door here. Same markings for the escape hatches or escape points or entry points for emergency crews. Boeing 747. Here we have our rear cargo loading door and our hold number five door, which is where they put your tigers and your interesting cargo that needs to be in a separate space. This is an illumination light next to the hold number five door. This helps the crews uh, who are loading the goods to be able to see the belt that takes them up. Pressure release valve. You can see the lovely empennage of the 747. This is the exhaust or the intake door for the auxiliary power unit and that beautiful gold speedbird there great coloration I really do like this dark uh, blue color it's really striking I was actually flying to Brussels a few weeks ago and uh, I was going through Dallas and this aircraft was parked there so I was able to run up and take some pictures of it at the gate and almost missed my own flight because I was trying to take pictures. Back here we have the exhaust for the auxiliary, auxiliary power unit and then the strobe lights. Let's have a look at the top here. So Imperial Airways actually uh, turned became BOAC in 1939 and uh, it merged with uh, B, uh, British Airways Limited, which was a short-lived company that operated from 1935 to 1939, operating basically local routes um, and some international routes. But at the outbreak of World War II, uh, all of those operations ceased, and uh, the British government essentially took over operation of all the airfields for the war effort. Nice jewel light here. And we got a, looks like an ATS antenna here. There's a few other antennas like uh, uh, air traffic control and collision beacons. There's a little mark here. I'm not sure if that's a scratch or if it's uh, just a little mar. We'll have to see if we can polish that off of there. We got the VHF antenna. And then uh, back to the history, uh, British Airways was formed again this time just British Airways in 1974 uh, with the merger of BEA and BOAC. BEA is the uh, British European Airways and BOAC is British Overseas Airways Corporation. This is our Wi-Fi box. This is our ADS antennas or ADF, excuse me, Auto Direction Finder. Here we have another VHF antenna. These are used for communications with the aircraft and uh, the ground by the crew. Let's have a look at the other side. Another VHF antenna, nice spiral painted on there. This is the hole where the gear is gonna go.
drain cock here. And these are knock ducts which allow air to enter the fuselage for AC conditioning. Here's the AC pack location. The gear doors. That's for the wing gear. This is the main gear. Gemini Jets. Another VHF antenna with nice spiral painted. It's another drain. And back here, another pressure release valve. And I think this is the antenna for the uh, emergency locator transmitter. You see the doors for the auxiliary power unit. And the auxiliary power unit basically serves the function of keeping the air conditioning and the lights and stuff on when the aircraft is on the ground and not using uh, the engines for power or not using a ground power connector either. Let's have a look at the wings here. This is the flaps down, so we've got some great features. These are the Krieger slats. They're a different kind of slat. They come from below the wing, so you can kind of see here how the slat deploys. It just has an actuator that just pushes it out and forward. Most slats are actually the leading edge rolls forward, but these ones basically sit in front of the leading edge of the wing. No dual lights in the wings, which I would have honestly expected considering this is probably a newer mold with the flaps down version. So I would anticipate that there should be a dual lighting there for the age of this mold. Slats look really good. Pretty impressive they're able to do that now. JC Wings has got on it, and uh, now uh, Gemini follows suit. Here we have our Fowler flaps. This is triple slotted flap on the 747. And we see our spoilers. This is a flapper on. This is a control surface of the aircraft. There's more spoilers. And here's our aileron. Fuel dump valve. This aircraft uses a winglet versus the 200 and the 300 variant. This winglet is just over six feet long. And uh, then they also added a wing extension on the 747-400. This basically breaks up the spiral of air that comes off the leading edge or the tip of the wing that can produce drag so they've invented a number of different methodologies to break that up and allow the aircraft to fly more smoothly. Let's look at the other side. Man those flaps are just so cool looking I'm just so glad that they have this option available. I guess I could anticipate that someday they'll have a spoilers up version maybe even as well. And then our wing tip device. Really iconic livery, just great looking aircraft. 747 of course developed by Joe Sutter and his team the Incredibles. Back in 1969 I think was the first flight. So this logo was designed in 1932 by Thierry Lee Elliott, who was part of a marketing company. So that's in the Imperial Airways uh, era, and then obviously continued onwards. Uh, the swoosh that British Airways uses here is, is supposed to be a stylized uh, representation of the Speedbird, original Speedbird. And oftentimes there would be also another speed bird up here on the, the nose of the aircraft. I do have models of the original 747-100 in the BOAC livery. So I'll have to get those out and 
You can have a good comparison of the Gemini and also the in-flight 200, which make a great model as well. BA operates to 160 destinations, and they're also part of the One World. I don't see the One World insignia on here, which uh, would usually be the case on most of the uh, fleet, as they have a One World marker right here by the L1 door and sometimes the L2 door. And this aircraft is going to be retired. Uh, they're going to be out of the 747s. Uh, 2023 is the estimated uh, retirement date for their 747. So this aircraft will wear this livery until its retirement, as will the other uh, historic liveries. So this aircraft uses the uh, RB211 made by Rolls-Royce. It also flies on the 767 and also the 757, different rated versions. And we'll get the fan out and we'll spray some air in there and just see if they spin for us. Everything looks good inside. And we'll also get the gear on and see how it looks. So let's do that and then we'll uh, take a look and see how it looks on the stand. Just fit in there with little magnets. They do roll. This one not so much. The wing gear doesn't tilt. Oh, this one does, okay. Maybe this one's just a bit stuck. The 747 has a very interesting landing configuration with these bogies uh, all pretty much highly tilted like this in this fashion before landing. So it'd be good to get this one to Tilt. If this one goes, then the other ones have to as well, so I can't imagine why it wouldn't. And then let's have a look at this uh, nose gear. So if we look here, you can see that the shock is fully extended. So this would be your in-flight configuration. And then this one, the shock is compressed. So this would be a, your on the ground configuration. And this is so that if you do have the model sitting on the table or whatever, it doesn't sit nose high because the, sh the nose gear is the proper length. Which I think is a, a really cool feature. Makes it look that much more realistic. I'm gonna go with the in-flight configuration on mine. I'm going to have it in that just before landing look. Shock on the 747 points forward. Most other aircraft that Boeing make, it points to the aft. And similarly with most of the Airbus jets as well. Look at that, beautiful. Such a nice aircraft. And a great model. Let's have a look at the stand here. Pretty snug fit. Let's see how she sits. Posture looks good. It's got a real good sort of in-flight look to it. Get it straightened up on the stand there. Sits nice and even, which is great. Now BA has a total of a hundred or two hundred and seventy-seven aircraft, 
They have 36 747-400s, and uh, they have 72 aircraft on order, including A3, 18 A350s and 12 787s. And uh, they're going to get uh, 18 of the new 777s, which will basically uh, put the nail in the coffin for the 747. And we'll probably do so in most of the other air airlines that use them. There's very few that still use them. KLM uh, uses them. Uh, Thai uses them. Uh, a lot of cargo operators. Uh, Lufthansa still operates the 747-400, but they have a pretty good sized fleet of 747-800, or excuse me, Dash 8 which I've flown on a few times as well. And I've got a model of one of those as well. Really, truly iconic aircraft and so good to have flown on these in the past. Now this particular aircraft is serial number 25823. Line number is 1195. This is a 747-436. Uh, there are, first class, there are 14 seats and that is from the nose of the aircraft to the L1 door. Then the aircraft has 86 business class seats which are from the L1 door to between the L3 and L4 doors or about to here. Then they have uh, Economy Plus which is from here to the L4 door. There's 30 of those seats and uh, then they have 145 standard economy seats which occupy the L4 to the L5 the remainder of the aircraft. There's also uh, the upstairs is all business class seating as well. There's no other classes up upstairs. Uh, there is a, that's a total of 275 passengers. Uh, the first flight of this aircraft was on January 11th 1999 and it was delivered January 19th 1999 which is uh, Harkening back some 20 years as well for the the history of the actual aircraft itself. The length of the 747-400, 230 feet, 10 inches. It has a wingspan of 211 feet, 5 inches, a height of 63 feet, 8 inches at the tail. That's a little shorter than the SP. Uh, the SP-747 has a little slightly taller tail to account for the fact that it's shorter and needs more rudder control. The maximum takeoff weight is a 910,000 pounds. It's 412 tons. Wow, what a just unbelievable amount of weight. The range is 7,670 miles. And this is all from an aircraft that was first de designed in the 60s and hasn't really undergone that much difference other than re-engineing since then. Uh, this aircraft got a retrofit uh, the interior in 2011 for the first class section. So it's uh, pretty modern in terms of what they have there. Um, the Rolls-Royce Trent RB211 is a 524 G model and they put out 59,000 pounds of thrust. Wow, just a lot, of, a lot of power to get that much weight off the ground. But a truly iconic aircraft and an iconic heritage livery. Really love the flaps down. If you have an option to get a model with the flaps down, I suggest you do it every time because it just is, has so much more interest to the model that you don't really realize until you actually get a chance to look at it. It's just such a cool feature to have on there. So if you're looking to get models, then that is now the way to go. I can't see that that truck actually wants to move. So let me know if you're going to get this model yourself or if this is something you have on your books to acquire. As I said, I have the other Heritage. I've got three more models coming in the Heritage. I got the Nagus, the Landor, and the BOAC again in in flight, but not the flaps down. So I'll be able to compare the Gemini to the uh, in flight 200 when it shows up, and it might be the one that's on its way. So it should be here maybe by the end of the week, and hopefully or maybe next week I will get around to unboxing it. Well, if you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up or subscribe to the channel if you're not already a subscriber. It's always good to see new people uh, signing up to look at awesome videos of awesome models. I mean, how cool is that to have on your shelf? I'm looking forward to adding it to the collection. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.